Hey, what's up, YouTube, and welcome back to more Gallon's Disease Discussion and Microscopy Videos. I'm your host, Jeremy Murphy, and today I want to talk about why the CDC doesn't have to do another Morgellons study, and we probably don't really want them to. You know, the last time they did a study on Morgellons, it took them six years and $600,000, <clears> and that's what we hear about on the news all the time, is how expensive it is and how they didn't really find anything. But that's the media putting a spin on it. When you actually read the study, it becomes apparent that they found a lot out, uh, including the fact that all of the final 12 participants uh, tested positive or equivocal for Lyme disease. That's pretty significant. And anyways, with subsequent research, which really needs to be recognized and understood and read, uh, we found out that Morgellons is a condition that's associated with the disease. And see, that's the thing about the CDC is that they're the Centers for Disease Control, not the Centers for Skin Conditions. So really, what you need is like an ICD code. You know, I interviewed Jenna Lucia Thayer a couple times on this channel and in our most recent interview which i'll link in the description below she talks about the potential for getting an icd-12 code for more gallons <clears throat> you know there's a lot of different conditions that can result from lyme disease uh, but the thing is is that the scientific investigation really needs to follow up on that statement in the Morgellons classification and staging and lessons from syphilis research paper, which states that syphilis may be a etiologic factor in Morgellons in a subset of patients, a different subset. And the reason why it says that is because most of the patients for those research initiatives came through the Charles Holland Foundation, or they came through Lyme disease doctors. We really need to go round up a thousand syphilis patients and see if the incidence of Morgellons is 6% in that subset or higher. You know, Dr. Randy Wymore was actually having a hard time finding Lyme disease in Morgellons patients uh, with molecular testing methods. He was using PCR and he couldn't find uh, Lyme disease in these patients. And he was told, well, just keep looking, it's there. And then one day, it, they're there. So I don't think they're there is a good scientific explanation of what the hell happened. So I think Dr. Wymore should step forward and, and clarify what the hell happened. Uh, you know, syphilis has the same problem in the secondary stage. Some research shows that the PCR test will drop off to 50%, which means it can give a false negative when syphilis is actually present. So if they're using PCR to rule out syphilis in these studies, what's the potential that those PCR primers or DNA molecular tests or whatever they're called by the scientific community, what's the potential that they're having the same problems with those that Dr. Wymore was having with the Lyme disease PCR? Getting back to what we're talking about, Morgellons is a skin condition. The CDC doesn't have to do another study for you to get treatment for the disease that results in that condition. As far as we know, the disease is Lyme disease, and you can see not only a Lyme literate doctor, but you can see an infectious disease doctor, and he may treat you for chronic Lyme disease. It happens. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to my interview with Jenna Lucia Thayer, where she talks about this, how not all infectious disease doctors are assholes. And probably the majority of them aren't, because now we have 16 peer-reviewed scientific studies that I'm probably one of the few people who've actually read. Uh, demonstrate Morgellons is just a condition that results from a bacterial infection. And that bacterial infection is where you can hold the CDC accountable, you know. If you want to march on down there, you're probably going to want to do it for Lyme disease, though they're starting to open up about Lyme disease. We do need a lot more research to demonstrate if, more, if Lyme disease can be sexually transmissible. Uh, I think it can. I think the research gives strong evidence that it can, but 
We need more evidence than just one single source. We need a lot more subjects. <clears throat> and we need to find out if it isn't the case that most people just have a combination of Borrelia and treponemes anyways. It makes it kind of hard to figure out if the conditions are resulting from this bacteria or that when typically they all travel in groups uh, and multi-ethnic groups at that. So we've got our work cut out for us, but, you know, the CDC, I mean, it's a skin condition, not a disease. I think Dr. Wymore needs to come forward and explain why the PCR uh analysis for Lyme disease wasn't working one day and then suddenly one day it was and if it's the case that we could be currently having the same problem with the syphilis PCR molecular tests and if that's holding back the Morgellons research that we are able to accomplish. You know you could also raise some money for Morgellons research. I think that's something that we definitely don't have anything keeping us from happening. You know, there are scientists out there who are willing to do the research on Morgellons, who, who are willing to put their name on a paper that may be accepted and even indexed on the National Institutes of Health website, the PubMed. So, you know, and when you go to PubMed, you'll see a variety of research that demonstrates Morgellons is a skin condition associated with the bacterial process. But look, the fact of the matter is most people who are talking about Morgellons really think they're breathing in the chemtrails or they got some kind of fungus or they're drinking nanobots in the water supply. I mean, that's just the fact of the matter. You have to realize that if you actually do have Morgellons, you have Lyme disease and that's what your problem is. You know, Morgellons is a skin condition. It indicates that there's an infectious process in the body, but most people complaining about Morgellons don't have that visible evidence of an infectious process. They may have some kind of infection, they may have ulcerations, but that doesn't mean that they're going to have the embedded collagenous filaments in their skin tissue. You know, you got lupus patients, you got eczema patients, you got a myriad of skin conditions. And that's really what Morgellons needs to be accepted as, a skin condition, because it's not its own unique disease. Although there may be a severe disease at process that we haven't been able to elicit yet because of some kind of faulty PCR analysis. What do you guys think? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. I'm going back to bed, I think, because I'm tired and it's raining and... We'll see you guys and gals soon. Take it easy.